Hi, welcome to I Can, I Am, I Will, the podcast designed to encourage you and help you build your confidence and self-empowerment. Today, we are going to talk about an analogy that I came up with that I'm super excited to share with you. I think it is really going to help you build your confidence, your self-worth. For those of you who are new here, my name is Lindsay. With this podcast, we talk about concepts and topics that I have used to build my confidence so that you can build yours. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. You can check out episode transcripts, articles. You can support the podcast. Thank you for your support. And you can contact me. I would love to hear from you at the website, kenandwill.com. Yesterday, I talked about how I got my hair cut and I got some negative responses. So I wasn't feeling so confident about my haircut. And then I got some like nasty things said to me, which was making me feel kind of down. But then I used a different mind frame to go from feeling down about my haircut to absolutely loving it and just rocking it. I rocked that haircut for like two years. <laughs> and now I want to give you a analogy to help you with a, another different perspective to help you to build your confidence and to get a different mind frame about who you are so that you can feel empowered. Because with the hair, it wasn't about hair. It was about the fact that I wasn't feel so com- feeling so confident. And then these external narratives and external things that people were saying kind of came in and could have eaten away at my confidence and made me feel extremely low on myself. I was fortunate enough to have the mind frame that I did not allow that to happen. And now... I want to give that empowered mind frame to you so you do not allow that to happen because you have the power and you can do this. We're going to do this together. I'm so excited to share this with you. We're going to start this story thinking back, reflecting back on, on little Lindsay. So imagine I'm like five years old and I'm learning how to cook. And I had a chair in the kitchen because I couldn't reach the counter yet. So I had a chair and then I would move the chair and then I would stand up on the chair and then watch my father cooking. And then he would like move to another area and then I would take, get down off the chair and then moved and <laughs> move the chair and then get back up on the counter. And then I would be thinking like, can you do this on one counter? <laughs> And when I was learning how to cook, I was taught to make things how I like them. So even if I was cooking for other people, if I was cooking for like a group of people, I was taught to make things how I think they should taste, how I would like them, my personal preference. And then I would hope that my guests would like what I made. If they did not like what I made, then at least um, I have food that I can eat because I like it. (laughs) This is how I was taught. And I'm going to tell you right now, I am not over-exaggerating. I am not tooting my own horn. I have gotten compliments on my cooking. I've literally had people tell me that they can taste that my cooking has been made with love. My cooking has been made with love, love for myself and then wanting to share that with others. Cause I'm like, Oh, I think this will be really good. This is a great idea. Let me try this. And I try it and I want to make it like as good as it can be. And I try for myself and then I like it. So then I just hope that other people like it cause I genuinely care. But if they don't like it, then boy, at least I have food. <laughs> I'll eat the leftovers. That's fine. More leftovers for me. I dated a chef. 
a French chef, like a professionally trained chef. I made him dinner and he said it was amazing. <laughs> he tried to take over in the, and I was like, no, get out of my kitchen. Stop. But, and he, he did not say everything was amazing. There was one thing that I was just trying and that wasn't that good. I agreed with him. So he was definitely critiquing me. It was kind of like a little nerve wracking. Like he would try it. And then I felt like I was like leaned in, like waiting for him to say what he was going to say. And I knew that he was not going to lie. And he even said like my food was amazing. And this isn't about me bragging about how good my food is. This is to show you that if you focus on doing something for yourself, then other people will enjoy it also. Because when you're focused on like with cooking, like making things that you like, then you're going to be putting your passion and your heart into that. And then other people are going to appreciate it. So now let's take that and relay it to you and who you are as a person. You have the power to make you into the person that you want. Into the person that you want to be. You have that power. A lot of times we're taught, just like we're with cooking, we're taught to focus on the people that are coming for dinner and making sure that they like it. And when we're focused on ourselves and thinking about who we are, we're focused on doing what other people want and being the person that other people want. Like with my hair, like, oh, guys like girls with long hair. Like I'm supposed to, ugh, first of all, I'm a woman. And then second of all, like, so I'm just supposed to have long hair even though I don't want it because that's what guys want. Ugh. No. Focus on doing what makes you happy and focus on being the person that you want to be and then hope that other people like that. If they don't, you still have yourself. You are with yourself 24 hours a day. Make sure it's someone that you like. And I don't want to go all crazy here, but eventually it's going to be someone that you love. And when you have that love, your entire life is going to change. Things won't seem as difficult. Things won't seem as hard. It won't feel as heavy. There will be times I, I'll be cooking and I'll be like doing something random, like chopping onions or something for like a stir fry. And I'm just living in the moment and cutting vegetables. And I will cry tears of joy. Like my eyes will just swell up because I feel such inner peace and tranquility and happiness and joy. Literally just being, just being. <laughs> I'm not worried about my hair. I'm not worried about what I'm wearing, what I look like. I'm literally just so overwhelmed with being that my eyes leak. <laughs> I want you to get to this place and a good place for you to start is by thinking of this analogy and thinking like, are you making a person that you want to be? Are you making, are you the person that you want to be? Are you creating that person? Are you focused on being that person? And instead of focusing on what other people want or what you think other people want, focus on yourself. Make a meal that you want to eat. Be a person that you want to be around. And then everything else is going to fall into place. I can guarantee that. And if people don't like you, or in my case, if they tell you that you look like a man <laughs> because you cut your hair, it's not going to feel as heavy. And you're going to realize that, that it's something wrong with them, not you. With that, we're going to end with our eye affirming statements. You can say them with me. You don't have to. 
Do what makes you comfortable. Are you ready? I can. I am. I will. Have a great day.